So, okay, these are the basic parts uh, of, of a quadcopter frame. Now, one of the hardest parts when you're first building one of these, uh, unless you go out and buy a pre-made frame, is finding all of the materials that you're going to need to build the frame. Uh, this is just square stock aluminum, and I've already drilled some holes in it and measured it out. But essentially, my frame consists of one bar that's uh, 28 inches long, that's so I can come in a little bit for the motors. So the motors are about 25 inches from the shaft to the other shaft. And that's a pretty typical size. Now, I've, I've chosen this square aluminum because it's, it's very easy to mount things flat and square. And you're going to find as you build uh, your quadcopter that keeping things square is very important to the performance of the final craft. So uh, square makes it real easy. Now, if you don't have stock aluminum, if you can't go out and buy it, uh, you can use uh, something like a towel rod. It's not that much heavier, it won't be aluminum, but uh, it'll be square and you can typically find them at a hardware store. We're lucky in Orlando, um, we have a, a couple of surplus stores and that's where I go to find all my parts. Uh, it's a place called Skycraft, but they have all kinds of stuff. You gotta dig through some bins, but you can find some things that you can't find anywhere else. So, I've, uh, I've got this, these raw pieces of aluminum. Now, you notice that there is this black material here. This is a very thin piece of foam rubber. And I buy this in squares, once again, at that surplus store. And the reason for the, the rubber is to try to dampen some of the vibration and quiet the frame down. When I, when I talk about quieting it down, what I mean is to reduce the overall vibrations. Vibrations in a gyroscope accelerometer based flight controller are very, very critical to the performance. So you want to make sure you dampen that however you can. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this. There's some great ideas on the forums. Uh, people use O-rings. People don't use anything and they still get good performance, but uh, I'm trying these thin, thin foam rubber and when I put the frame together I'm not going to uh, crank down too hard on the screws and that'll give me a little bit of a vibration dampening in the boom itself. So these are adhesive backed. I've, I've put it on here. I've already drilled my holes. So that's one member. Now obviously I've got to keep these on the same plane, right? So I've got to cut these. So I've got a space in the middle. If I've got enough screws in my mounting plate, uh, it's not going to take away from the overall strength. But uh, I want to make sure that I've got equal lengths here, so I've measured everything out so that at the ends of the boom, I get the right space here in the middle, and we're good to go. Now, these are just eighth inch, inch aluminum. Uh, I got stock. I got a sheet of it for about, I think it was 3 or $4. I've drilled all the holes. Uh, some of these are uh, for weight savings but not really. They're going to be mostly for uh, passing wires from uh, one part, one side of the plate to the other side of the plate. You're going to have a lot of wires on your quadcopter, so you're going to want to make sure you have uh, those kinds of holes so that you can make it really easy to pass the wires through. So I've got, this is actually my top plate, and then I've got my bottom plate. And it's a little bit different configuration in terms of the holes. I don't need as much pass through in the, from the bottom. The mounting holes all and that's these four and the four on the corner I, I basically clamped these together and drilled those holes so I knew they were in the same place uh, when I did that I also marked the sides because unless you're working with a drill press in a machine shop it's very difficult to get things perfect right so I've marked the corners here so I knew as I build it uh, these are always lined up like that. Okay, so before I start putting the uh, the booms together, I'm going to uh, take my top plate, and I've got these standoffs. Now these are just nylon screws with some nylon standoffs and some uh, plastic nuts. Um, I'm going to use these to mount my Hoverfly Pro on top of my top mounting plate like this. And these standoffs will, will do a couple things. They'll get it off the conductive aluminum plate, 
uh, and they'll mate very nicely with these vibration grommets that are in the mounting holes. And this will help to reduce some of the vibration that's translated into the board. Uh, you don't have to use nylon, you just have to make sure that if you use a conductive screw that it's not connecting uh, any of the electronics on the Hoverfly Pro to the rest of your structure. So I use nylon just to be safe. So we'll put these in. You do have to decide when you're building this uh, what configuration you're going to use. And by configuration I mean either plus or X configuration for your quad. Now that will determine how you're going to mount your board. If you're going to be in plus configuration, then we want to align the Hoverfly Pro with the booms, right? So that's what I've chosen for this quad. It's the most basic configuration. So that's how I've mounted or, or uh, drilled my mounting holes. Uh, when you're making a plate like this, it might be a good idea to go ahead and add some X mounting holes. So if you want to switch later on, you won't have to disassemble your whole quad. Now I'm, I'm going to be using a lot of tools. Uh, I don't want to put the Hoverfly Pro on yet. I'm going to wait till the very last step and, and add that. I am going to take these mounting uh, nuts and just put them on the ends of the screws here so I don't lose them. Now the other thing I'm going to do in preparation before I put the two booms together is I'm going to mount the landing gear onto the bottom plate. I'm not using nuts. Uh, I've basically chosen a 632 screw and the holes that were already in the landing gear were just small enough that they'll self-thread. Now that's kinda cheating a little bit but if you wanted to add nuts you can. Uh, sometimes I like plastic parts to be able to break away if they want to. So there's my mounting, bottom mounting plate with my landing gear and this will be pretty good. You'll see there's another battery tray I'm going to add to this after, um, but I won't do that yet. I'm checking the markings that I had on my plate to make sure I line everything up right. Whenever you put metal parts together, you don't want to tighten one screw and then put the next one in. Don't wait till you're all done, and then use a pattern as you tighten. You don't want to create undue stresses on the metal parts. Right now I'm just getting the nut on there. I use nylock nuts because parts that I don't want to take apart all the time, I don't like to use Loctite, so I use Nylocks, and uh, they seem to be, hold up pretty well. So I've got the cross boom. This is very loose. I'm going to tighten that up just a little bit. One thing I did was uh, the holes on the mounting plates are just the right size for the screws, but the holes in the crossbars are much bigger. And the idea there is I've got my foam rubber, but if at all possible, I, I'd like uh, the um, 
screws from the mounting plates to not touch the cross members and that would couple the vibration into the plates. Now the truth is that I can't get it perfect but at least that's the idea. Now remember I've got foam rubber in there so I didn't crank those screws down. Uh, before I tighten the, the side, the two side beams, we've got a square here I'm going to just make sure things are square. Does it have to be absolutely perfect? No. Would it be great if it was absolutely perfect? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it helps the performance. The uh, Hoverfly um, Pro flight controller assumes that it's perfect. I mean, it has to. It's based on math. But the closer we can get it, the better we'll be. But you'll never get it perfect. Not unless everything is machined and, and produced for you. Which in a frame like this, it's not going to be. Now, I'm going to flip it over and make sure that all of my screws have about the same amount of thread showing. And it looks like it's pretty close. This one's a little tight. That looks pretty good. And that's our frame.